Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tippet for June 1st, 2017. It's the first day of the Atlantic hurricane season, and it's about this time of year that we start talking about the seasonal forecast and, in general, what kind of activity we might expect in the Atlantic during the summer and fall. And as always, these are rather inexact forecasts in the sense that we're only looking at an overall measure of what kind of activity we might expect and in terms of what particular pieces of coastline or what land areas or what islands might be at most risk for hurricane landfalls this year that's an area of the science that is still very very much in its infancy and we cannot really say with any certainty at all what coastlines or countries may be at most risk in a given year and anyone can get hit any areas of coastline that are typically prone to hurricanes, even if it's the quietest, quietest year in decades in the Atlantic, that one storm that forms and hits land could hit anywhere, really. And so everyone should always be prepared, no matter what and no matter what is expected. Uh, but we are going to talk about this year specifically and uh, what we might expect in the Atlantic. Now we're starting off, of course, with the global SST map for the last 30 days, basically the May anomaly. Uh, and this is always what we look at really because the oceans explain a lot of what we need to know for hurricane season and why is that it's because the oceans are very persistent across time scales of a few months compared to the atmosphere which we can only really predict out to a couple of weeks maximum with any kind of skill uh, but the oceans persist a little bit longer than that and so when we have these large-scale features of warm and cold water relative to normal across the globe in May and June, you can reasonably expect most of those major features to remain the same for at least the next few months going into the summer. And so this can give us valuable information as to how the hurricane seasons around the globe may evolve in response to this oceanic configuration because sea surface temperature does govern a lot of tropical circulation and it gives us almost all of the information that's necessary to make a reasonable forecast for the hurricane season. So the major features we see around the globe here are that we have a pretty enzo-neutral pattern in the equatorial Pacific. We don't really have um, an El Nino or La Nina right now. And it is a warm bias to neutral, so it is a little warmer than average, but it is not at El Nino threshold right now. And uh, this is especially interesting because uh, only a couple of months ago, most models forecast an El Nino and a pretty strong one to develop during this summer in the equatorial Pacific. And if that were to come to pass, it would focus convection uh, over the Pacific and you would uh, get outflow that causes wind shear over the Atlantic and then compensating sinking motion over the Atlantic as well to compensate for the rising motion over the Pacific and that normally shuts down the Atlantic hurricane season and makes it much more inactive than normal. Uh, but the models recently in the last couple of months have dramatically backed off from their El Nino forecasts and most models are now only dancing with the El Nino threshold throughout the summer and early fall. The Atlantic hurricane season ends right about here on this graph and uh, most forecasts now are really around here. Uh, some of these warmer ones up top are even coming cooler than you see them here, and uh, the only real warm, reliable model left is the ECMWF, and even it is beginning to back off of its El Nino that it has been forecasting. So the consensus now is really that we're likely to have a warm, biased, Enzo neutral, or maybe a weak El Nino. Uh, for the summer and the hurricane season. And even if we have a weak El Nino, it, it's not a, if it's not an overwhelming El Nino, it leaves the door open for the Atlantic to compete for some of that convective activity. If you have a big El Nino, the Pacific always wins. But if it's even a weak El Nino or maybe a warm bias neutral, uh, the Pacific might not necessarily steal all of that thunderstorm activity. And the Atlantic can still have a chance to compete with the Walker cell in the Pacific. And uh, one reason that it may be able to compete this year and go head to head with the Pacific is that the MDR is currently a little warmer than normal. This uh, main development region is what that stands for. The deep tropical Atlantic where most hurricanes initially form, uh, this is warmer than normal right now, which favors Atlantic convection during the summer. And that thunderstorm activity is a, is a favorable sign for hurricane development in general if this persists. And uh, these two regions together, if you consider the tropical Atlantic and the tropical Pacific, the comparison of these two regions tells you a lot about the hurricane season. For example, if the MDR is anomalously colder than the central Pacific Enza region, then you almost always have an inactive hurricane season in the Atlantic relative to average. And if the MDR is warmer anomalously than the central Pacific, then you have a better chance for an active hurricane season. Uh, we can see a lot of this in a plot where if you plot these two things together, where the y-axis here is the difference between the MDR and the Nino 3.4 region, 
anomaly, so the top half of the graph is where the Atlantic is essentially warmer anomalously than the Enzo region. The bottom half is where the tropical Atlantic is anomalously colder than the Enzo region. And then we plot that against the x-axis, which uh, is Atlantic ACE, which is an overall measure of hurricane activity during the season. The right hand side of the graph is active hurricane seasons, the left hand side is inactive hurricane seasons. You can tell a couple of things here. You'll notice that you never really have active Atlantic hurricane seasons when the MDR is colder than uh, the Central Pacific. That almost never happens. You really need the MDR warmer um, for you to have a good chance of a hurricane season. And you can see that when we have La Niña's and uh, a warm Atlantic, those are red dots and those almost always have active hurricane seasons associated with them. There's only one example in here, 2013, which we'll mention again later, that really failed to generate hurricane activity uh, in that configuration. So we don't have a La Nina that this year, so we can't use this as a guidepost. Normally, if we have a La Nina and a warm Atlantic, such as 2010 or 2005, it's almost a guarantee that we have an active hurricane season on tap. But this year, we don't have that. We do not have a La Nina. Uh, the Atlantic is warm, though. And so these two are now warm together. One is not cold and the other warm. Instead, they're both warm right now. And uh, what we can look at on this graph is the set of yellow dots, uh, which indicate all years where that was the case, where both the Central Pacific and the Tropical Atlantic were warmer than average at the same time. And you'll notice that there's a, a large spread in these yellow dots from right to left, indicating that there were some years like 1987, 2009, 2006 that were inactive Atlantic hurricane seasons. And then other years like 2012, 1969, 2003, 2004, which were active Atlantic hurricane seasons. So th there's a spread of outcomes here. Having a warm Enzo region, a warm neutral Enzo region, and a warm MDR at the same time doesn't really guarantee you a result. And so there's uncertainty here, and there are, you have to look deeper to find answers. It's not a slam dunk anymore. When you don't have a strong La Nina or a strong El Nino, it really reduces uh, some of the explanatory power that the SST pattern has. If it doesn't, it's no longer dominant if you don't have a La Nina or an El Nino. It doesn't dominate the pattern, and so it becomes more difficult to decipher what will occur. So there's more uncertainty this year than usual, not to mention that this configuration is somewhat rare and we have rather bad analogs. Uh, for example, the best analog objectively right now to the global pattern is 1981. And there are a couple things wrong with it. One is that it, it has kind of a La Nina-ish pattern, which is not what we're going to have. We're going to have a warm uh, biased neutral or a weak El Nino if that. Its PDO signature is opposite of what we have uh, right now in some ways and not others, and then it also has a different Atlantic configuration than we have this year where it doesn't have the warm blob off of the east coast that you see here in the current observations. So this analog is actually pretty bad, and yet it's the best one since 1966 anyway in the database. So we don't have a lot of historical pretext for some of the patterns that we're seeing, and so we're going to have to use a little more common sense with the current observed pattern uh, to get an idea of what we might expect from it. So if we go back to our 30-day observed uh, SST plot here, if we have a, a generally Enzo neutral warm or weak El Nino state in the Pacific and we assume that stays that way and we have this uh, warmer tropical Atlantic and we assume that stays that way during the summer, then that leaves us with a still uncertain situation. So we need to look for other things that are going on. And a couple of things that catch the eye of me this year is uh, the Eastern Pacific is currently trending a little cooler in May than it has during the last five years. And uh, the last five years has seen a very warm region here in the eastern Pacific west of Mexico, and this has led to very enhanced thunderstorm activity during those hurricane seasons and uh, comp and, and associated upward motion, which we can see here in blue during the last five years, uh, 2012 to 2016. There's a lot of convection in the central and eastern Pacific, and uh, this essentially robbed the Atlantic of uh, its upward motion uh, because uh, usually anytime there's rising air, there's sinking air around it. And uh, so if the East Pack has all the rising air, the Atlantic usually doesn't get very much. And so the Atlantic has had generally uh, inactive hurricane seasons during this time period, especially in the deep tropics in the area where hurricanes typically form in the MDR here. Uh, but this year, with the water a little bit cooler so far, if that persists into the summer, it could indicate that this pattern will not appear with the ferocity that it has in recent years, and we may even see something closer to the opposite of that, where the Atlantic 
takes uh, more of the anomalous vertical motion compared to the eastern Pacific, and things tilt more in favor of the Atlantic if that's the case. Uh, the other thing going on though with the Atlantic is that despite the warm tropical SSTs, we have some stuff going on to the north, namely this warm blob east of the United States. And this has been a semi-permanent feature of the last several years as well. And the reason this matters uh, comes into play if we look at a, a closer look at the Atlantic here. Here's another look at it. And compare it to years that were active in the Atlantic during June or July, August, and September. If we look at that here, we see that this, this semi-ring around the southern and eastern Atlantic of warm water is the same as we see this year. So this is a favorable sign for the Atlantic hurricane season, but this blob here is not really present. And it's a much more lackluster look east of the United States during active hurricane seasons. And uh, this blob is not normally present. Does that mean it's an, a necessarily a negative factor for the hurricane season? Not necessarily, but it can be. And uh, here's the reason why. If you were to plot the mean contour of, say, 26 Celsius SST during the peak of the hurricane season, it's normally something like this and dips down near Africa. And so south of this line, you have warm water that's typically supportive of deep tropical convection. And then to the north, uh, you're getting into mid-latitude and polar stuff, and you don't really have convective modes north of that line. But south of it, you do. And you note that this line bisects this area of warm SST anomalies. So when this is present during the height of the hurricane season, this is enhancing a part of the Atlantic that is supportive of deep tropical convection. And so you get enhanced convection on average in the subtropical Atlantic in the mid-latitudes east of the United States. This can disrupt the regular Hadley cell in the Atlantic. The Hadley cell is where you typically have a rising air and thunderstorms in the tropics, and then it comes uh, to the north and sinks up here. So you have rising motion here, sinking here, and that typically supports the deep tropics, where the tropical waves are coming off Africa and trying to develop. If you are aiding thunderstorm activity to the north of that, then you're disrupting that pattern because the pattern naturally wants air to sink up here instead of rise. So if you have rising here, it starts to disrupt the rising motion down here in the deep tropics where it is most efficient at aiding hurricane development. You can get hurricanes and stuff to form up here, but you generally don't get as many and you don't normally get them to be as strong for as long as you do when they develop in the more classic deep tropical region, which is why it's called the MDR. And so when you see warm water up here, if you get too much of it, it can disrupt the Atlantic. We had this kind of problem in 2013 where we started off nice and warm down here and the uh, forecasts were generally for an active season, but we got too much warm water up here. The Atlantic uh, disrupted itself a little bit. Its configuration was not optimal despite how it looked early on and we ended up with a very inactive season in 2013. So there is the possibility that we have something like that happen again, especially if the swarm blob expands a little more to the east than it is now. But if it stays small and other things dominate the pattern, um, it may not be a factor. It's kind of hard to say at this point, but it is possible that that puts a damper on what is otherwise a fairly favorable SST configuration in the Atlantic. So those are a couple of things to think about. We have uh, a non-committal ENSO signal. That means that the El Nino La Nina signal does not dominate the pattern this year. Normally that's a nice out. It helps us forecast the season with confidence when we have a La Nina or an El Nino. We don't have that this year. So confidence is lower than normal. We have a couple of competing factors going on in the Atlantic. We do have a warm tropical Atlantic, which is a favorable sign for the hurricane season and could support an active year. But we also have some weirdness in the subtropics, which has historically um, hindered uh, activity in years such as 2013 in recent memory. And we still have a, a weird Pacific configuration where waters are still very warm near Hawaii, which could increase the threat for them this year if storms track near there. But we also have a cooler East Pacific so far. Um, both of these compete with each other, and uh, which one of these ocean basins, the Pacific or the Atlantic, gets the most convection this year and the, the most favorable walker cell and lowest wind shear will likely have uh, the more active hurricane season relative to average. Taking the balance of all these factors into account, the most likely outcome, in my opinion, is probably a near normal year. Perhaps slightly above average, but probably near normal. A normal year in the, in the Atlantic is about 12 storms, 7 hurricanes, 2 of which become major. Uh, NOAA has uh, come out with their outlook and said that a near to above normal hurricane season is most likely this year uh, with 11 to 17 storms. And uh, the count is not as important as, of course, where they go. We can't tell you that now. Uh, we don't know where an individual storm will go until it forms. And until we have that happen, we won't 
don't know. Uh, so everyone, uh, please stay prepared for this year. Uh, it is not likely to be a super quiet one, so there could be multiple land areas getting hit by multiple storms, as is often the case uh, when we don't have super quiet years. There are usually multiple landfalls, so uh, folks in the Caribbean, in the United States, in Canada, and Bermuda, and all the other islands across the tropics uh, do be prepared, and uh, we'll keep you updated here uh, during the rest of the season. Thanks for watching.